September 28th, Daily Video Bible Reading from the Net Bible, Hebrews chapter 12 from the New Testament. Therefore, since we are surrounded by such a great cloud of witnesses, we must get rid of every weight and the sin that clings so closely and run with endurance the race set out for us, keeping our eyes fixed on Jesus, the pioneer and perfecter of our faith. For the joy set out for him, he endured the cross, disregarding its shame, and has taken his seat at the right hand of the throne of God. Think of him who endured such opposition against himself by sinners, so that you may not grow weary in your souls and give up. You have not yet registered to the point of bloodshed in your struggle against sin. And have you forgotten the exhortation addressed to you as sons? My son, do not scorn the Lord's discipline or give up when he corrects you. For the Lord disciplines the one he loves and chastises every son he accepts. Endure your suffering as discipline. God is treating you as sons. For what son is there that a father does not discipline? But if you do not experience discipline, something all sons have shared in, then you are illegitimate and are not sons. Besides, we have experienced discipline from our earthly fathers, and we respected them. Shall we not submit ourselves all the more to the Father of spirits and receive life? For they disciplined us for a little while, as seemed good to them, but he does so for our benefit, that we may share his holiness. Now all discipline seems painful at the time, not joyful, but later it produces the fruit of peace and righteousness for those trained by it. Therefore strengthen your listless hands and your weak knees, and make straight paths for your feet, so that what is lame may not be put out of joint, but be healed. Pursue peace with everyone, and holiness, for without it no one will see the Lord. See to it that no one comes short of the grace of God, that no one be like a bitter root springing up and causing trouble, and through him many become defiled. And see to it that no one becomes an immoral or godless person like Esau, who sold his own birthright for a single meal. For you know that later when he wanted to inherit the blessing, he was rejected. For he found no opportunity for repentance, although he sought the blessing with tears. For you have not come to something that can be touched, to a burning fire and darkness and gloom and a whirlwind and the blast of a trumpet and a voice uttering words such that those who heard begged to hear no more. For they could not bear what was commanded. If even an animal touches a mountain, it must be stoned. In fact, the scene was so terrifying that Moses said, I shudder with fear. But you have come to Mount Zion, the city of the living God, the heavenly Jerusalem, and to a myriad of angels, to the assembly and congregation of the firstborn, who are enrolled in heaven, and to God, the judge of all, and to the spirits of the righteous who have been made perfect, and to Jesus, the mediator of a new covenant, and to the sprinkled blood that speaks of something better than Abel's does. Take care not to refuse the one who is speaking, for if they did not escape when they refused the one who warned them on earth, how much less shall we, if we reject the one who warns from heaven? Then his voice shook the earth, but now he has promised, I will once more shake not only the earth, but heaven too. Now this phrase once more indicates the removal of what is shaken, that is, of created things, so that what is unshaken may remain. So since we are receiving an unshakable kingdom, let us give thanks, and through this let us offer worship pleasing to God in devotion and awe, for our God is indeed a devouring fire. God, endurance is hard. So many of these writers were athletic type of people. And so we hear Paul, and in this case, um, the writer of Hebrews, talking about races and competitions and sports and things like that, and this endurance. Now, I'm not an athlete. I mean, I curl, and that's a lot of hard work and a lot of cardio, but I'm still not an athlete. (laughs) I don't have the coordination to be an athlete. But there is a level of endurance you need to to do races and running and competition type sports. And I'm beginning to understand more and more the endurance I need as a Christian. 
If I truly am a Christian, if I'm truly pressing in, if I'm truly trying to live my life to glorify you, if I'm truly trying to do as you command me, which is to seek other people and tell them about how, how amazing, awesome you are, that endurance piece has to kick in. And I will tell you, sometimes it doesn't. It almost feels like I haven't trained enough for the actual competition and I get worn out and I get exhausted and I get depressed sometimes. And I have found, since this has happened more than once, I have found there's a couple things that I can do to help with that endurance. One, obviously I can be in your word every single day. Um, two, I can be communicating to you as much as possible. Um, talking to you throughout the day, praying to you throughout the day. Three, repenting of sins that could be filtering um, how I see things. I have found that unrepented sin in my life is incredibly exhausting. Whether it's realized sin or sin that's just kind of harboring and festering there, no matter what it is, I have learned that I need to get that off the plate. And we need to either go through a conversation where... I seek forgiveness and it's done with, or I seek forgiveness and then we work on it together. So that has has helped immensely with the endurance part. I have also found obviously that asking for your help, uh, your strength, for you to take my yoke. Um, but I've also found what you command us multiple places in the Bible is to surround myself with a community of like-minded believers. Uh, it's amazing to me just how refreshing it is and how energizing it is to have somebody who understands you, to have somebody who understands the words you're talking about, the emotions you're trying to convey, uh, the frustration, the anger, the, the lack of strength. Most people don't understand if they're not Christian some of the things that we go through. It's not like we go through severe persecution uh, where somebody points a gun at our head and says, are you Christian or not, and then kills us. Uh, but there are things that we do go through and, and verbal persecutions that we go through, especially online. But I found that having that family, not just a family that I go to church with on Sunday, but having those close friends, those people that I can call at any given time and say, hey, I really need to have coffee. Can we talk about something? Um, people who will sit down and work through a Bible passage with me, people who will do Bible study with me and actually be there to not just socialize, but to really learn about your word. I found that that helps with the endurance too. It, it definitely lifts me up higher. I suspect that's why people do well in team sports is their team members lift them up uh, on top of it. Um, and we know that anytime anybody is cheering us on or getting excited for us, it automatically spurs us on to feel that, that sense of excitement and strength as well. God, I, I just thank you so much for the amazing people you've put in my life. The people who listen to my rambling phone calls late at night, who text me the next morning and check, check in on me. The ones who get excited for me when they see me working um, on projects you've put in my life, the ones who are, are just amazed and in awe as they watch you work in my life. Um, God, I am so incredibly blessed that you handpick such amazing people to surround me with. And I just pray that for everyone listening, that they will seek out and know people who will strengthen, encourage, and help with that endurance for that race that you have set us all on. In your son's name I pray. Amen.